Watching TV is an inherently non-productive activity, and the harsh truth is that unless you're watching educational content or watching TV from an educational lens, TV can't be made productive. However, we can learn to make the most of enjoying it so that it is time spent restoratively. Hi everyone, my name's Mark. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Several weeks ago, I came across a video by Ali Abdal called How I Watch TV Productively, and quite frankly, I disliked about every single part of it. To be clear, I have no ill will against Ali's video. I take a lot of inspiration from him. He makes some incredible content. So if you haven't heard of Ali Abdal, definitely check him out. But this one video really bugged me. I wrote an entire script for a response video, and here we are. This video just felt like it went too far in terms of making everything in your life productive. The video could have been a joke. I know he released a morning routine video that was like almost definitely a joke, but based on the comments, the ratings, and my own opinion of it, I don't think it was a joke. If you haven't seen the video, you can go ahead and watch it, but pretty much when he was going through the story parts or whatever, he would speed up the TV show to watch, I guess, more of it in, in less time. I'm a big fan of Ali's content. This one video just really, really set me off on a tangent in my head, and I was like, all right, I gotta get this down on paper. Whether or not it's a joke, I think it's a topic worth talking about. Entertainment is meant to be enjoyed. Whether you're going to a play, watching TV, playing video games, whatever you do with it, it's meant to be ingested and enjoyed. It's not a task you have to check off. Unlike a deadline, you have waiting for you at the end of an essay, TV shows are gonna be around. You're gonna always be able to get the next episode of a series, and when you finish a TV show, there is always going to be another one waiting for you. YouTube videos and watching TV is one of my biggest vices personally. And one way I like to analogize it for anyone who doesn't kind of have this vice is that it's like reading for pleasure. When I read school assignments, I read them much faster than I would a book I read for pleasure. I skim through and I try to jot down the notes of things that seem important, the big topics of the reading. But if I go at the bookstore and get either or by Soren Kierkegaard, I'm not gonna go ahead and speed read through it. I'm probably gonna read this much slower than I might for pleasure. All in all, if I'm reading a book that makes me feel something that I'm looking forward to, I'm gonna take my sweet time in reading it. All that rambling aside, today's video is gonna be split into two topics. One is gonna be sort of the response part to Ali's video, but mostly just talking about leisure time and how we can make entertainment more restorative, how we can really enjoy the time we spend being not productive. And the second one is gonna be how you can make the most of TV. Personally, I think TV is one of the biggest time sinks of our generation. I think you can lose a lot of time to TV, right? That I'm biased because that's where I've lost a lot of my time, but it's a time sink in the same way that ice cream is unhealthy. And if you wanna know what that analogy means, stay tuned for part two. So, leisure time. I read this paper by Adorno. I was introduced to it in my freshman year text and ideas class, and I thought it was super fascinating. I, it really brought some things to light for me. You know, the idea of leisure time is something I've had on my mind for a very long time. That being said, this video will be a lot of my thoughts and my experiences. I don't really have anything empirical for you. There's this concept that if you have free time, there's different ways to spend it. One of my favorite examples for this is reading. A lot of people, myself included, say that they want to read more. But when we have free time, we go to YouTube or Netflix or go play video games. So what do you do with your free time? In Ollie's video, his main thing about making TV productive is by watching more in less time. He talks about an anime called Hunter x Hunter, and I believe the idea was that he speeds through using a Chrome extension, the early story building parts of the video, and when it gets to an action scene or something really important, he slows it down to normal speed. The reason why I say that speeding up television does not make it productive is that television is meant to be watched, and that 30 minutes of television, no matter what you watch, how much you watch, is still 30 minutes of television. I mentioned earlier that there will always be another episode, another series, another show, another movie waiting for you when you finish what you're currently on. My argument with this is that just speeding up TV doesn't make it productive. It is still time spent watching TV. The only reason why it's being made productive is because Ollie's watching more TV in less time. You know, let's say you have an assignment due at midnight. If you watch an hour of TV, is it more productive if you watch three episodes of Hunter x Hunter or six episodes of Hunter x Hunter on 2x speed? The answer is neither because they both take an hour. I mean, assuming, you know, the episodes are 20 minutes long, right? They, they both take an hour to watch. It's not more productive. You're just, you're just kind of taking enjoyment away from yourself. TV is meant to be enjoyed. So enjoy, if something's really boring, then okay, skip through it, but just let yourself enjoy it, truly. If you're rewatching Grey's Anatomy or The Office for the 20th time, I don't, I don't understand the rewatching things that many times phenomenon, but if you do, enjoy it. You know, my, my main issue with Ollie's video is, is that, you know, watching more TV in less time doesn't make it more productive. You're still spending that much time watching TV. There's no such thing as productive TV watching, unless it's educational content. 
That's my argument. And let me know what you think in the comments down below because I'm genuinely curious, is this just me or is it actually more productive to watch more TV in less time? Because you know, once you finish one TV show, there's another one to move on to. All that being said, let your work be work and let your play be play. Another thing is to just not binge content. Obviously that's easier said than done. Cliffhangers exist. I have fallen into this trap countless times. But again, an hour of TV is an hour of TV no matter how much you watch. TV is entertainment. And if not held in moderation, that's when it becomes dangerous. In terms of not binging content, there are a few rules you can set up for yourself, and I talk about that in just a minute. It's actually inspired by one of Ollie's older videos. This is something much easier said than done and something I struggle with, but if you're gonna relax, then relax. Try to make sure that if you're gonna watch a TV show or a YouTube video, you relax. Don't put on a YouTube video, also listen to some music, and then browse Instagram, Twitter. You're not focusing on anything. This is not a good use of leisure time. When you're doing your leisure time, make it restorative. For me, one of those restorative things is making videos. I can sit down to edit and I just kind of get into the zone sometimes. With the typing video blowing up, it's felt a lot more like work than hobby, but see if you can find some things that restore you. Let yourself be bored because creativity comes out of boredom, right? Now, my last point, my most important point is that life is not two categories. Work hard, play hard. How to balance your life and work. How to balance, you know, work and play. There's a third category and that is hobby. There's work where you have external deadlines and people are asking you to do things that you might not be so adamant about. For example, I'm a university student and university is work. It's external deadlines. There's a reason I'm doing them beyond my own personal interests. Sure, I love my classes. They're super fun, but it's still work. Then there's the opposite side of the spectrum and that's play. I'm watching videos. I'm playing video games, whatever it might be. That just doesn't take any work at all. And then there's hobby. And hobby is, I would say, 40% work, 60% play. It's the thing you've always wanted to do. Read, draw, learn Russian. You have to find and make time for these things because when we're on our free time, it's so easy to say, okay, I've done you know, my essay today. I finished a lot of work. Whew, I'm tired. Are you tired or are you just uninspired? Ask yourself this. When you're, when you're sitting there and you're like, okay, finish my work. Let's go watch some YouTube videos, some Netflix. Let's play some Minecraft, whatever it may be. Is there something that you want to do more? These videos are one of the things that fall under hobby category for me. I prioritize them. I treat them as tasks I need to get done, but at the same time, it's fully self-motivated. And as we push ourselves more and more to do what we actually want, to do the things we don't want to do, to get to the things that we want to do, we have to test our self-discipline. And as we do that more and more, our self-discipline grows. So when it comes to self-discipline, I think it relates very strongly to one thing that we should do with TV and the second thing that we can do with TV. The first thing is self-moderation. And coming back to that ice cream analogy, it's been bugging you, I know. TV is unhealthy if you don't moderate it. If you eat ice cream, every single day for every single meal or something, that's really bad for you. If you watch TV for five hours a day, that's really bad for you. But if you eat ice cream every once in a while or watch TV for only a little bit every day or every other day or every few days, that's a good thing. You should give yourself leisure time. You should let yourself relax. You should let yourself enjoy the small things. You don't need to speed up your TV or eat ice cream faster. Just take your time, enjoy it. So how to moderate. Uh, this is actually inspired by one of Ali's comments in one of his old videos where he mentioned that he doesn't watch TV or Netflix or anything unless he's with friends, unless he's in a social setting. Now, I guess that's changed since, but I was like, huh, that's really good idea actually. And I actually adapted that rule when I came off of keto, I can only have ice cream or very sugary desserts when I'm with other people. So if I'm out with a friend getting some dinner or something, then yeah, get that milkshake. But if I'm alone, we'll save it for now. Now, there are so many rules that you can make, but here are just a few examples. For every number of episodes that you watch, you do X. Set your episode count ahead of time. I can only watch two episodes before I start my assignments. After my assignments are done, we can, you know, what's the saying? go at it. This one is a tough one to stick to, but it will test your self-discipline. If you really want to stop watching as much TV, tell yourself, okay, one episode of a 40 minute show or two episodes of a 20 minute show. And that's it for the day. If you pass that number, just observe that. Just passively observe that for a little while and log yourself over time. See how that goes. Lastly, one of my rules for YouTube was actually disabling my entire recommended feed. I haven't watched any YouTube in about a week and a half because I've just kind of barred myself from it entirely just to see what turns out, what I can gain from this boredom. And I've already had a lot of like, oh man, this is weird. I can't go to YouTube to just waste time. Anyway, block your recommended on YouTube. Make it so that when you go to watch YouTube or you go to watch TV, it is intentional searching. For Netflix, one of my rules that I really haven't been sticking to very well is only choose from your list. Don't browse for other things. You gotta choose from your list. 
if you have a rule that you live by for moderating something like TV or ice cream or anything else, definitely let me know in the comments down below because some of them I stick really well to and some of them I don't stick really well to. So I'd love to hear what your rules are. And if you don't have any rules, make one up in the spur of the moment. If you're feeling incentivized to watch less TV because me, random internet stranger, is telling you not to, write it down in the comments down below. Let me know what your rule is. Keep yourself accountable by posting it in public. So section 2B is how we can make the most of watching TV. If you didn't already know, I'm studying language and mind at NYU alongside computer science and linguistics is super fascinating to me. And specifically is second language acquisition. One of my rules for myself is that if it's a weekday and I'm watching TV, it has to be in another language. I can put English subtitles on shore, but it has to be in another language. Right now I'm watching the 3% in Brazilian Portuguese, and it's really cool to see what things I've been picking up alongside the very, very sparse Duolingo lessons I've been following. If you're one of the people who likes to rewatch TV shows, turn it to a different language with no subtitles. You will be surprised at how much you can learn by just immersing yourself in language acquisition this way. The voice acting will be very weird at first, I promise it will definitely be weird because their mouths aren't moving and blah, 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 blah. But just try it. One hour of TV is still one hour of TV, but we can get a little bit more out of it if we watch it in another language, if we just expose our minds to that second language. Okay, so uh, the second thing I wanna mention is to watch TV that your peers or friends might be interested in and try to connect with TV and movies on a slightly deeper level so that you can talk about it with people. I found this to be a really good uh, social hack to kind of get into the small talk with people. Mainly it's kind of like, hey, have you seen the new Marvel movie? It's a great way to just get into the small talk. And then over time, you can get into the big talk. You can just enter conversations with TV. These are just two things that worked for me. And seeing as I'm a pretty average person, I figure they can work for a lot of other people too. But of course, everyone's individual. So see what works for you. All I ask is that you give it a shot. You let yourself enjoy things and maybe get a little extra value out of them. So those are the two main parts of the video. Um, but the last thing that I want to talk about is the, the kinds of lessons that you can get from TV and movies. This is going to sound real weird. I watched Sword Art Online uh, in April, I think. I watched like the first 25 episodes in like two days. The, the COVID habit change really hit me hard, but it threw me, and I kid you not, I know this is gonna sound weird, threw me into an existential crisis about free will and having choice over things. I actually have that as a video idea, but I doubt I'm ever gonna get to it. But all in all, TV shows can teach us things if you let them. Some ones that I listed out for, for this video specifically, Daredevil and the dichotomy of these two personalities is something that, don't take this the wrong way, but I feel like I can relate with. The movie Pursuit of Happiness, it's a fantastic movie. There's just so much emotion in it. And if you watch it at 2x speed, you lose all of that. You lose the time that it takes for him to make this journey. My Hero Academia, and I know it's a fantasy world. I talk a little bit about this in my video called Talent is Arbitrary, but it just taught me a lot about tenacity and drive and superseding what you're born with. In the first Pokemon movie, Mewtwo's quote, it's not the circumstances of one's birth, but what one does with the gift of life that is relevant or something like that. Dude, that's huge. Bojack Horseman. I don't think I can sum up the feelings that I felt in that show in just a few words. It, it teaches you about being human in a lot of ways. Now, I'm always on the search for shows that make me feel something, right? That, that change my perspective on life. Because that's why entertainment exists. That is why books for pleasure and TV show and video games exist. When I cried in How to Train Your Dragon 2, it was because it created an emotional connection. When I was watching Sword Art Online and doing weeding on Animal Crossing at the same time, and it threw me into this, like, why am I doing this digitally when I could be doing this in real life? This like question of free will, it gave me value. I really got something from it. You know, when we watch Thomas Frank or Ali Abdal or even moist critical videos on YouTube, we get enjoyment out of them. I get inspiration from them in a lot of ways. Tell me what has like hit you hard in the comments below. I'm so curious to hear if people resonate with this. The thing is watching TV and being entertained in your leisure time is super important. And if you don't change it to another language, that's okay. If you don't do it with the goal of talking to other people, that's okay. Art conveys that something words alone cannot. And if we speed that up and we try to make it productive by just rushing through it, we lose a lot of the value in those lessons. And I just wanna make a quick addendum here, even with shows that aren't real, like anime or cartoons or Marvel shows, there's still someone who wrote these stories. Underlying meaning of these stories, it might sound weird to say that an anime threw me into an existential crisis, but it still dealt with questions and concepts that any other media might. Characters, worlds, environments, they can all be made up, but what the story is is still written by a human being, at least until AI gets smart enough. And those stories are what we can take from. Anyway, 
that's the whole tangent that Ollie's video threw me into. So the whole world is falling apart right now and the best we can do is do what we can to hold ourselves together. And if that means taking 20, 30 minutes, just, just put your work aside, sit back and watch some anime, watch a movie, rewatch Grey's Anatomy for the 10th time. Just do it. Enjoy it. Do not feel guilty in doing it. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. It would really mean a lot to me. I, I think this is just a, a topic I've had in my head for so long and it wasn't until I saw Ali's video that it all just barfed out of my mind. Again, no ill will towards Ali. His content's amazing. It's just his video Felt like it took the productivity thing way too far. If you'd like, you can go watch some of my other videos, but I encourage you to take some time to just mull this over in your head a little bit. Take some time to think about it, make some rules to watch TV by. And a lot of people who watch the videos aren't subscribed and I'm pretty sure that's because of the wild ratio that the typing video put me at. But alas, thanks again for watching. Don't forget that work is work, play is play, and that you gotta make time for your hobbies. So have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome.